the Tudors is about King Henry VIII and his court, young King Henry VIII and his court, rather than the popular image of the, you know, fat and very, very ill Henry VIII, which is sort of, we, which one often sees in portraits. It's focusing on the younger version of him and um, his friends, his court, and the, the beginning of, of what we know as of Henry VIII. And uh, it's following that original journey. And um, my character is Charles Brandon. He is a confidant of the king, best friend. Uh, they grew up together due to the fact that um, King Henry's father and Charles, Brandon fa Charles Brandon's father were also close. Charles Brandon's father was King Henry's father's standard bearer at the Battle of Bosworth. And King Henry and Charles grew up together. And so they're very close friends, even though Charles had no official title. He was a mister, um, which is how Charles Brandon starts in the story, starts as Mr. Brandon. Um, they are very, very close. He's the only person, Charles Brandon is the only person who can actually um, effectively compete with Henry and beat him with no fear of repercussion. I mean, he really can't keep his dick in his pants. He, he just, you know, excuse me. Um, he... he, he uh, loves women, he chases them all over the place. Um, as one of the lines go, one of Margaret's fantastic lines, he can love for, uh, you know, a, a year, a month, a day, an hour, and then that's it. And you'll love fantastically for that period of time, and then move on. Charles has pushed it too far. Normally, you know, he had pretty much free reign wherever he went in court. He could say whatever he wanted to whoever he wanted. And um, it, because he's King Henry's best mate, no one can touch him. But with Margaret, he just went too far because he marries Margaret and again without asking Henry which is the most important thing he marries into the royal family without asking Henry and also had potential for causing a, a political disaster young vibrant athletic fit I mean he really was this this man of incredible power and what the image of what a, a king would be and Charles and him were very similar. You know, played sport all the time, hunting, jousting, so sort of a, a great camaraderie. You know, it's like sort of a, a, a rugby team or something. You, you're always competing with each other, but it just—it's on a far more deadly scale when it comes to jousting, for example, which was a blood sport. You could quite easily die, and uh, yeah, I mean, you're charging each other on enormous horses with huge amounts of armor on and a great big stick in your hand. You've got to be careful because you really don't want to knock the king off because you're, you're threatening the, the royal line. You're, you're basically making a personal attack on the king, so everyone deliberately lost to him. It's quite a fun game, actually. Um, when um, when the, the tutor came over to train us, it was, it was really interesting. It's like a cross between uh, squash and tennis. And... Um, it, it, it's, it's a fantastic sport. You're playing off the walls and everything. And the whole point is, instead of playing tennis where you're supposed to get it past someone, the whole point is to play it so it bounces on the ground, then off the back wall, and then as close as possible to the back wall. Because th that's, that's a, a point, and then you have to... Th they can only get a point if they beat that mark close to the wall or something. It, it's quite complicated to begin with but a very fun sport. It's not about power at all. It's about control and spin, lots and lots of backspin on every shot. You couldn't ask for a better place to be the best friend of a king because you haven't got the responsibilities of the king and you're untouchable. And people will always want to get into your favor to um, you know, oust other people out of court because you've got the king's ear.